Hey everyone, <clears throat> Superfizz here. Uh, I want to record a state of the stake. I don't know what number this is. It's going to be 40 something. I don't know. Today is February 25th, 2022. And uh, I'm going to tell you some secrets. If you see me in my exercise clothes all sweaty, it's because I have my most exciting thoughts while I'm exercising. And then I rush home and I'm like, I got to get this out. And so some of the things that have crossed my mind um, today. I have been shy about pushing client diversity about my role as the Beacon Chain Health Consultant because uh, at heart, I'm really, I'm a school counselor. Like I'm not, I suck at calculus. I, I can't describe the deep underpinnings of Ethereum. Uh, yeah, I've been involved in cryptocurrency since 2011 and, and, and Ethereum since the beginning, but at heart, I'm really just a normal guy. Um, yes, I'm, I love this stuff, but I'm not, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. And some of that has led me to feel like, oh, you shouldn't be speaking up. But I also recognize that who I am is valuable to the community in the same way that who you are can be valuable to the community. And that's kind of, um, that recognition gives me the ability to speak up and say, if I can do this, then you can do this. You can stand up for the good of the network if you believe it's the right thing. And that's kind of what, what takes me to, to talking today. Uh, I want to start by talking about Layer Zero. And Layer Zero is the social network that underpins Ethereum. It, it used to be like this conflict like, oh, if, if your network relies on people, then it's not really a solid network. And I, who do you think runs all of the miners or validators or all of the nodes? Those are really people. People underlie the network. And if we don't have a strong community under the network, then the network is worthless. And so that's the role that I've created for myself is to build this strong layer zero community for Ethereum validators. Um, I believe that decentralization is... Yeah, it's, so I, I'd have to think if I, if I said it's the most important thing, but it's a damn important part of the Ethereum network. Decentralization means that the Ethereum network is a thin layer of nodes, validators, network, people all around the globe, uh, rather than just a network that's controlled by a few central operators. Uh, so my, my thoughts take me in 85 different places. Um, but let me begin by talking about the current client diversity crisis. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick screen share here. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm sharing uh, pools.invis.cloud. Uh, and this is a site developed by um, OX Invis. Um, he used the, uh, the operator identifier. He linked operators to their, their provider. Um, it uses Michael Sproul's client fingerprinting um, and Joseph Cook's explanation. And so if you have time, I really encourage you to spend some time looking at this. Um, and so if, if you have listened to my previous State of the Stakes, uh, in the beginning, I, I really encouraged solo operators. Like um, when I began ETH Staker, it really was to primarily support solo operators. And, and then with the realization that uh, everyone can be a staker. And our role as ETH staker is to support any staker in any way you stake. If you're a Coinbase staker, we support you. Like, I want to help you get up to speed and understand what staking means. And if staking on Coinbase is great for you or Kraken, that's great. Do it. I want you to do that. But as you learn and as you grow, as you become more aware of the need for decentralization on the network, I hope that you then um, begin to stake in ways that improve the health of the overall network. So what I'm looking at on pools.mis.cloud, um, Coinbase is running 48,859 validators, um, and they are 92% PRISM. Uh, they make up 24% of the PRISM contribution of, of the network. So a quarter of the PRISM validators on the network are run by Coinbase. Uh, and then Kraken, 30,000 validators running PRISM, 15%. So together, these two operators make up 40% of the PRISM um, validators on the network. Now, 
I, I don't actually fault them. They are doing their job. Uh, they are exchanges. Uh, clients kind of demand that they offer staking service. Um, and I don't blame them for offering it. I know that it's lucrative for them and that's great. I'm not against them at all. Um, so when it comes to like my aunt who wants to stake, sure, stake on Coinbase. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it gives me some mixed feelings, but I know that if she wants to stake, that's the only way she can do it. She's not gonna use MetaMask unless I do it for her. And then it's not really even me staking. That's, that's her, I'm sorry, not even her staking, that's me. Sorry, get excited. Um, so the point I wanna make, I'm not against Coinbase or Kraken offering a staking service, um, but I do need any staking provider to stake with a best interest of the network in mind. And to talk to these providers and, uh, you know, I, I do understand they're making changes. I need, I need us as a community to continue pressuring them until that changes. Because as long as PRISM is 66% of the network, our network is at serious risk. Um, <sighs> let me gather my thoughts. So if you're a home validator, uh, let's say you're a solo staker and you are staking with Prism. You're okay. You're doing fine. I don't, I, I know that I spent a lot of time before I had this grasp of the issue. I spent time encouraging home operators to switch from Prism to another client. Um, it wasn't until F February, 2022, this month that we got this data to tell us that, um, Sorry, to tell us that uh, to tell us that it's not home validators causing this issue. It is providers, and I think it was uh, an oversight to assume that the providers were more diversified in their clients than they were. We kind of thought, uh, you know, these big operators they they know what they're doing, and they're not going to put the network at risk. When we found that uh, they had lapsed uh, in that judgment then we were able to turn our attention to them and we now have commitments of change from them. Very excited about that. I know it can change. If you're a home validator running Prism, I appreciate you for being a solar staker. Uh, all of the solo stakers, all of the people who are contributing to the, the health of the network, you are extremely valuable. Do not be shy or ashamed that you are running a home node with Prism. That's fine. I also want you to stand with us and point at these operators, Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, and say, hey, you need to change. Um, and I know that they're in progress, but I guess my, my big message there is, I mistakenly pointed the cannon at home validators. That was a mistake. And now that we know the true issue, I need the entire community to join with us in expecting operators, uh, these, these enterprise operators uh, to do the right thing. So yeah, uh, that is pools.aviz.cloud. That is the current goal to get Coinbase, Kraken, and Binance to exercise true client diversity. I desperately want to see them um, running. You know, I, I'm not even, I'm not even sure. I, we have some, some obligation to, to set a standard or a goal. Um, but really, I need them to just be below, I would say, to start with below 50% uh, PRISM. In the long run, and that is in the next six months, a year, we need to get all, um, all exchanges, all operators below 33% PRISM. None of the four clients should have more than 33%. But right now, the goal is break the super majority of 66% PRISM, uh, then we can go from there. <laughs> all right. so. That is the current client, client diversity crisis. I know that it's choppy. Um, I had all these thoughts swirling in my head while I'm exercising. I didn't take any notes, I just threw it out. There it is. Uh, I appreciate your time for listening. Uh, so while we're focused on this crisis, I also want us to look at the long range. Um, and I, I guess maybe this is the, the medium term. For the next year or two, what do we expect from client diversity? Uh, now, to begin with, I expect um, Prism Lighthouse, Nimbus, and Teku to each be below 33%. That is a thing that needs to happen, um, and we must keep pushing until it happens. 
that is one layer of decentralization. Decentralization is not one layer. It is lots of layers. Another concerning layer of decentralization, and it's the one that I intend to target next, is no enterprise operator should have more than 20% of the validator share. Um, there are a lot of operators that aren't going to want to hear this. Centralized services have accumulated power and they don't want to relinquish that power. It's natural for them to want to continue to accumulate power. I don't blame them. As the community, as layer zero, we have an obligation to push decentralization to its limits. Uh, and with that, um, we as layer zero need to expect operators not to have more than 20% of the validators under their control. That means that Coinbase shouldn't have more than 20%, Kraken, Lido, Binance, Rocket Pool. Yes, I'm a fan of Rocket Pool, but it should not have more than 20% of the network. Um, and people will say, well, Fizz, you like Rocket Pool. Wouldn't it be great if, if all of the network was run by Rocket Pool? No, no. It would be great if all of the network was run by solo validators. And I know that's not going to happen. But any, any operator, provider, middleware service should not have more than 20% control of the network. Um, that, that doesn't take away from any of the things that I like. It just means that my priority is not any single product. My priority is the health and decentralization of the beacon chain, of the Ethereum network. Um, that's why, I believe that's why um, people listen to my message because I'm not trying to, to gain, I'm not trying to get anything. I'm only trying to promote the health of the beacon chain. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to wrap that up. There are actually one or two more things I want to mention. Um, I'm looking forward to someone to fork the Rocket Pool installer to work as a single node operator. Um, and so a solo node operator. If you've ever installed, installed Rocket Pool, you know, as a node, you know that it's simple. It's like three or four clicks. Thanks so much to Joe Clappis for streamlining that uh, and to the Rocket Pool team before Joe got there for creating a really good um, installer. The Rocket Pool installer was great um, before Joe came and he definitely made improvements to it to, to involve all four clients. Um, and even Lodestar is, on, is in the beta. But what we need is someone who can fork that Rocket Pool installer and let it run as a solo validator. The reason for that is Rocket Pool makes it easy to install any of the four clients with a press of a button. It actually suggests a random client to begin with. Um, and if we can get peep solo operators to run Rocket Pool, uh, sorry, to run the Rocket Pool installer as a as a solo operator, um, they can, number one, easily install any client. And number two, in the future, they'll easily be able to switch between clients. So um, I don't have all of that ironed out yet. If you're interested in doing that, um, feel free to hammer away at it or uh, come find someone in trading. In, I'm sorry, that's the Rocket Pool Trading Discord and say, hey, what's going on with this? And they're going to say, I don't know, ask Fizz. Um, I, <laughs> I, I'm not looking to be bombarded, but uh, it is something that I will begin pushing in the future. Uh, another thought that's been on my head. Uh, I just got back from East Denver. I had a great experience. And um, one of the things that constantly blows me away about Ethereum is the, the desperate need for developers. Everyone is hiring developers all the time. Um, there's practically a fight over um, over employees at, at these these conferences, like it's to say aggressive is kind of an understatement. Everyone is hiring, um, and so I want to kind of think about our layer zero solution to this. Is the community should be promoting education that increases involvement with Ethereum in the long run. Um, education is where all of this starts. Whether that is um, giving kids access to good primary, secondary education. Um, I really think many of, many of these startups should consider offering scholarships to undergrads. And you're gonna say, that's not gonna pay off for four years. But if we begin seeding those fields now with skills for the future, we're going to 
reap tremendous benefits. Um, you can't expect thousands. Yeah, we literally need thousands, thousands of developers to come from nowhere. You cannot squeeze water out of a rock. In order for us to prepare for the future growth of Ethereum, for the future development of Ethereum, we really need to begin investing in undergrad and even graduate education for people in cryptocurrency, uh, in blockchain development, in smart contract development, um, in complex math. That is, that is us preparing for the future. If we had done this four years ago, um, we would be in a much better position than we are now with developers. So yeah, um, <laughs> I, I just had so many thoughts on my mind. I wanted to share them with you. Um, I love doing state of the stake when I, when I feel uh, uh, engaged about it. Sometimes I do let my own imposter syndrome kick in and I just need to flush that out. Um, and uh, when I'm ready, I'm glad to, to help guide the entire community in the, the best direction for decentralizing Ethereum. So um, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. I hope you'll join us at ETH Staker. Uh, I am Superfizz. You can follow me on, Super, on Twitter at Superfizz, uh, or I also love uh, Reddit. Uh, I spend a lot of time in ETH Finance or on the ETH Staker subreddit. Um, and yeah, you also, I, I have a, a, a good family in the Rocket Pool Trading Discord. So um, come say hi. And um, find a way that you can fit in and do this. Uh, this is building on Ethereum, being a part of the staking ecosystem is a good thing. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to have you all in the community. Thanks a lot.